We're down in Big South Fork area of the Daniel Boone National Forest. It's late July, bears are breeding, and they're in search for food, and it's a good time for us to try to catch some bears. So what we do on typical trap line that we have is we try to deploy as many as possible. It takes some time to put them together, so we're limited on how many we can put out. So we try to do about 10 to 12 to maximize how many bears that we can catch in a day. So we'll place these traps usually about a half mile apart, try to compass different home ranges of the females. We've got this designed in a manner that is safe for the bears. So our locking mechanism has just one clamp on it. So the way we put it together tries to eliminate any kind of like sharp edges for the bear pole. The sharp end of the locking mechanisms to the outside with our cable lock here, our cable clamp, the bolts face out. So when the paw's in and it cinches, there's a minimum amount of sharp edges that can touch it. Kind of grind the edges of these, make it smooth. So when it gets around that bear paw, the harder they fight, the tighter it'll get. It usually doesn't have any kind of consequences. There's usually maybe just a small abrasion. Get some moss around the table. So the good thing about moss, there's a couple things that you can use for your spring and hiding your spring, but I really like moss because it's lightweight. It blends in well. The ideal is we're directing the bear exactly where we want to step. So the bears that we're working on down here in McCreary County, uh, we've been studying these bears since probably about 2010. We first initiated our research down here and it's just a continuation of that. We've seen that the population continues to grow and that's the entire purpose of this is so that we continue monitoring the population and what they're doing. So as we enter into late summer, early fall, the food sources change as well. And we've seen some of that sign as we travel along the Forest Service roads here uh, to set our snares. So we see a lot of the sassafras trees that have been rolled over from the bears. So we're in the Big South Fork National Forest. And this time of year, we get a lot of um, trees rolled over by the bears like this right here. And so what they're after is they can smell these berries that develop at the top of this sassafras tree. And there's dozens of them along the roadways. But this is just a natural food that bears feed on this time of year when these come into season. We transition past the blackberries and we're moving into other crops that's coming in. And this is one of their favorites at this time of year. So the traps that we're using is called an Aldridge snare. It's not a selective trap. We can't determine if we catch a male or female. So during the process of our research trapping, we have just as equal of an opportunity to catch male bears as we do females. So today is our first day of deploying traps in the area. So what their main goal now is to get as many out as possible so that we'll check it at least twice a day, morning and evening run. All bears that we catch are good information. We collect data equally from whether it's a female or a male bear, the same. The only difference that we'll have is the collar. Male bears grow fast, uh, so they'll put on a lot more weight in the winter than what females do, and they're more difficult to collar. Plus, there's not much information that we're looking for. We don't have any reason to track male bears specifically, but it's very important for us to know the location of the den sites in the winter, and that's the reason why we use collars on the females. Sometimes going into these trap sites on these ridge lines, you'll come across this. Two main land mammals that'll eat ground nesting bees is bears and skunks. Most time it's bears that does it. You'll see where they dig it out and it doesn't affect them. Uh, they don't pay any attention to the stings from the bees as they're eating them. They'll try to go after the larva. That's their main thing. That's where most nutrition is with the larva, but they'll eat the bees in the process as well. So the goal is hopefully with some of these traps that we've set out this morning that with the bear activity we've seen, we've actually even seen a couple bear as we've been traveling down the roadways. And hopefully that movement will translate into a captured bear today.
All right, so we've got all our traps deployed this morning. Now it's time for us to make our evening run, so we'll go in, make sure that we still got bait, none of the traps are thrown, and see if we caught a bear. So as we approach, we can tell that there's nothing in here, our cubby's still in place. So the second thing we'll do is we'll check to see if there's any activity at the site, see if any of our bait's eaten on the ground or on the tree, and obviously nothing's been here yet. A lot of times we'll have a lot of other uh, small mammals that come in, whether it's possums or coons, and maybe rob the bait before a bear gets to it, but it doesn't look like anything's been here right now. So probably a little over a 200 pound bear. Caught good around her ribs. We'll go back, we'll get his uh, dart worked up and some drug worked up and we'll get him down so we can work him up. So after we successfully dart him, we'll retreat back here, kind of get out of sight, out of mind. That way you can calm down and have it easy. He'll go under anesthesia easily and everything. It could be as little as a minute and a half or it could be 15 minutes before he finally goes down. So it gives us a clean place to work. The main thing, even though this is an evening capture and sunlight's not an issue, with them laying on the forest floor like this, we want to protect their eyes because we'll have to move her around a little bit and everything. So we might want to make sure that there's no sticks that jab in her eyes. We have three means identifying bears, pit tags, ear tags, and tattoos. Ear tags are easy to locate, but the longevity of them can be limited. Tattoos are something that are long lasting and will last the entire life of the bear. The reason we go after this tooth is it's easily accessible. It's a tooth that the bear can live the same life with or without, so it doesn't affect the animal by losing that tooth. And it's generally easier to extract that tooth and not do any harm. Ooh, she got some tooth wear. Pretty heavy. Look at them upper molars back there. They're almost flat, she's old. Look at them upper incisors. I mean, she's probably at least 14, 16 year old, but just from what I've seen in the past, she's probably at least that. So what we're doing is we're putting a leather spacer on this collar. So with this design, it allows this collar to eventually drop off the bear. So if the bear puts on a large amount of weight in the fall, then the collar will simply drop off. Good. Time will vary on how fast it'll react. Sometimes it's as little as 30 seconds. Sometimes it may take 18 or 20 minutes. This evening we went out, done our evening check. I come down to the last two traps that we had that we'd set this morning, and we was able to catch two females, which is our goal. You know, we was after the female bear so that we can put collars out. By putting these collars out is to continue to collect data so we can put it into our population model. So uh, ultimately we can do the den surveys in the winter and count cubs and see the sex ratios of those cubs.